After over three years of making YouTube videos about all things living in Cleveland, I have helped so many people move to the Cleveland area. And the number one question I get from families is, we want to be in the best school district. Well, in this video, I am going to tell you the 10 best school districts in the Cleveland area. Hi guys, I'm Patty, Patty sells CLE. Welcome back to my channel, Living in Cleveland, where I make videos about all things Northeast Ohio, Northwest Ohio, and even down South. You know the drill. If you don't want to miss any of my videos, click on that subscribe, hit the like, leave a comment. Okay, let's get started. Every video I do about any suburb, I always talk about the schools. If you've been watching me for a while, you know I am a former city, public city school teacher. I was a special ed teacher in Cleveland for about 10 years. Took a break, I owned a tutoring company that serviced all inner city schools. And then I came out west to a cute little town called Vermilion, and I was a special ed teacher there for almost five years. So education's in my blood. And I thought it's about time I do a video about just schools. So I am taking all of this information from niche.com and the Ohio Department of Education. There's also other sites you can go to like greatschools.com, but I didn't want to make this too complicated because they're all pretty similar. So I suggest, and anytime you call me and we do a Zoom call and we're interested about the school districts, you know, do your homework. I can't be biased, but everything I'm coming from, I'm talking to you about, you can look up on the internet, but I just thought I'd talk about the 10 and give you a little bit more insights about where they're located um, and just a little more info about it. So let's get started. Okay, number one, this is according to Niche. It's not according to me. And if you looked on Cleveland Magazine or you looked on Great School, no, yeah, greatschools.org, US News and World Report, you might get a completely different list. I'm just going, I like to use niche. It's got a nice, it's a nice summary of things. Um, so I'm just going off of that. And the number one school district, which isn't surprising, is Solon. And Solon is an east side community. Um, it's in Cuyahoga County still. And I'm gonna be putting up maps and the niche.com data and the ODE, which is Ohio Department of Education data up here so you can see it for yourself. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just giving a brief little synopsis of every school district. So it is an east side community. It is a fairly large community. There's about 4,300 students in the entire school district, but the student to teacher ratio, they say it's 18 to one. So that's pretty good. Now, ODE, does give it an A in all categories. So they are, they're, they're known for being one, obviously a top school district in the, in the, in the Cleveland area. Now, how much is it going to cost you to buy a home there? Well, Solon, according to realtor.com, the average home price is $270,000, but I can tell you there are some million dollar homes in Solon. It is a pretty wealthy community. So, and that's kind of over there by the Beechwood area. And I'll show you the map up here. So number one, Solon, always top rated. And I'm pretty sure Solon, well, I'm trying to think if they ever make the top 10 of Cleveland's best suburbs, because that should be coming out in May and it's the middle of March. So usually it hits the top 10 suburb to live. Now, number two, Beechwood. Now, if you watched my I think I did the five best suburbs in Cleveland. Beachwood this year is number one. I love Beachwood. Um, it's a small district, less than 1,700 students. 14 to one student teacher ratio. Um, <clears throat> ODE gives it an A in all categories and prepared for success. I don't even know what that means. I mean, and even when we were, when I was a, an Ohio school teacher, we were like, what does this even mean? Whatever. Now, Beachwood, what I like about Beachwood, it's an east side suburb. I recommend you go back and look at my Beachwood video. I just did it not too long ago, my second one. That's where the shopping is. That's where your Whole Foods is. That's where Beachwood Mall is, where you have Saks Fifth Avenue, Nordstrom. That's where Legacy Village is for your Crate and Barrel, Restoration Hardware, all things we do not have <laughs> on the west side. And it's also pretty close to downtown Cleveland. So Beachwood, I highly rate it. Um, I love Beachwood. I think it's a great centrally located. I told you in the Beachwood video, my kids go out there shopping all the time. 
So not surprised that Beachwood makes the number two spot. Okay, number three. And I'm kind of upset about this one. And this town always makes the Cleveland Best Suburb list. And I really get bothered by it because I don't think of it as a Cleveland suburb. I think of it as an Akron suburb. And this is Hudson. Now, this is an, another large district, almost 4,600 students. It's not even in Cuyahoga County, it's in Summit County. And when you see the map up here, you're gonna see how much closer Hudson is to Akron than it is to Cleveland. Um, but ODA gives it an A. It did give it two Bs in two categories and you can be able to see that. Now, Hudson's gonna cost you. It is a very wealthy, affluent area. Are you seeing a pattern here? Uh, the average price of a home is $525,000. Now, don't forget, and you're going to see up here in the map that I'm just like sort of screenshot from Realtor because you could look it up yourself. You can see there's some really expensive million dollar homes in Hudson. It is a very affluent southern suburb. But a lot of people, I guess, here's the thing between Akron and Cleveland, Independence is in the middle. And I've done a video on um, Independence before. So a lot of people from Hudson can still work in the Cleveland area, even though they're not working downtown, they're working in Independence, which is why Independence is such a popular area because it's like equidistant between Cleveland and Akron. So whatever. Hudson is the only Summit County on this list though. So there you go. Now, number four, Rocky River. Again, this is our, this is our first West Side suburb to make this list. And Rocky River was, according to Cleveland Magazine, last year, the number one suburb. And it's like, every year it goes between Beachwood and Rocky River. They just flip, flop, flip, flop. And why? Because the schools are excellent. Rocky River is right next to you. You have Cleveland, Lakewood, Rocky River, right on the Lake Erie shoreline. Um, Rocky River, um, a small school district, 2,600 students, now, Niche gave it a C- minus in diversity, which I totally agree. 16 to 1, student-teacher ratio, OEE gives it an A. Now, here's the kicker. It says the average price of a home is $215,000, which I can tell you why. I know Rocky River, like the back of my hand. I grew up in West Park and Lakewood, both surrounding Rocky River. There are a lot of teeny tiny homes in Rocky River um, when you get further away from the lake. So those are the homes that you can get, but even those, you're gonna get an 800 square foot house for $280,000. Um, but you go towards the lake and watch my Rocky River. I highly recommend, I've done a video on all of these cities. At this little area called Tangletown, that's where the rich live. And right on the water, you're talking millions of dollars. So you have a, it's another, but you can also get, I'm doing a deal. Um, I just sold a condo for $130,000. So, you know, but if you want your kids to be in the Rocky River School District, you know, it's the place to be. And you can afford a condo, go for it. So I love Rocky River. They got great amenities. It's close to everything. They're shopping on Detroit. Shopping and dining is top notch. They got this little cute area called Old Rocky River and it's got Tartine Wine Shop. It's got this Dino De Napoli Italian restaurant, um, Sam and Dave's. Oh, of course it's got a Heinen's, which if you watched any of my videos, Heinen's is the um, high class grocery store. Uh, my mom won't shop anywhere else. I'm not there yet but I will go to a Heinen's if that's all there is there. So I love Rocky River, excellent schools, small, great spot, close to everything. Okay, moving right along. The next one, back to the east side, Orange Schools, Cuyahoga County. Now, here's a lot, um, there's a lot of cities that Orange Schools service. Now, and I and I mentioned this in most of my videos, some cities will service like, like I live in Lorraine, where I live, my kids go to Amherst schools, but a few blocks over, they're gonna go to Lorraine schools. So it's kind of broken down by that. And even, in, and that depends on what your property taxes are, like what school district you're in. So Orange Services, Orange, Pepper Pike, Moreland Hills, and Hunting Valley. And if Hunting Valley sounds like an uber wealthy city, it is, it is the most expensive city in all of Cuyahoga County and maybe even the state of Ohio. And it's also a small district, only 2,000 kids go there. 
and the student teacher ratio is 16 to one. ODE gives it an A. Now, because of Hunting Valley, you can get a house in Orange Pepper Pike for under $300,000. But in Hunting Valley, you're talking millions. In fact, the most expensive home in all of Ohio, it just sold not too long ago, was $15 million. I'm gonna put a picture of it up there. It's called Ravencrest, and it was just built in 2009. Scott Wolstein built it, and he's like a real estate developer. And uh, Cleveland State University, their sporting arena is called the Wolstein Center. So uber wealthy, and unfortunately, he passed. I guess he had cancer or something. I don't even know how old he was. but And it just went contingent. And I, I can't remember. I tried to look it up to see who bought it. Somebody famous. So, I mean, continue with the pattern with wealthy. But also... There's options. You can get a house for three hundred, and I was looking. There's plenty of houses in there in the three hundred to three hundred fifty thousand dollar range. So there's that. Now, staying on the east side, number six is Chagrin Falls. Such a cute little town. I love it. I think I've done one or two videos on Chagrin Falls. You have the actual falls. You can walk around little restaurants overlooking the falls. Cute little shops. Cute. The houses right and around Chagrin Falls are so, so cute. Um, and then it's also a small district. So it depends if you want a larger district or a smaller district. There's pros and cons to both. So 1,800 kids go there. Um, and that also serves not just Chagrin Falls, um, Bentleyville, which is wealthy, and part of Moreland Hills as well. So part of Moreland Hills goes to Orange, part go to Chagrin Falls. Here's the kicker. According to Niche they get a C minus in diversity. So if diversity is important to you, and you know, I do like that they, they do take that into consideration because I do get a lot of families that are like, we need to be in a diverse community. So I like that they put that in there. So that is number six, Chagrin Falls. Not surprising, I love it. I would move there. <laughs> I would love living there. Even though I love being on the lake, I would drive an hour to get there. So love Chagrin Falls. Okay, number seven, back to the west side, Bay Village. Um, so you have Cleveland, Lakewood, Rocky River, Bay Village, all on the lake. I don't think any of Westlake borders Lake Erie. So it's right there. And as you go west, well, it stops at Cuyahoga County because then there's Sheffield. And no, Avon Lake is pretty wealthy too. So Bay Village, 2,400 people there. Um, 16 to 1 student-teacher ratio, ODA gives it an A, Niche gives it an A, um, the average home price is 275000 and just like Rocky River, the further you, away you are from the lake, oof, my nails are bad, um, the less expensive the homes are, but they're also teeny-weeny little bungalows. Um, I was showing my cousin these houses for like $350,000, and like you could like touch each wall with like spreading your hands out. Uh, just because the schools are so great. So, but also really cute, right on the water. I just love it. You can be like, even in a $250,000, $300,000 home, you could walk to the water and you see people pushing the strollers, running. It's got a beautiful park system. Like my kids called it the wooden park. And it was right next to the, of course they have a Heinen's and uh, they have a huge water park. And that's where Huntington Beach is. And I was just reading in Cleveland Magazine, like the top 10 2022 restaurants and right at Huntington Reservation I'm pretty sure right there yeah there's a pizzeria called Chatty's and it named it was like number six in the whole of like all the restaurants it's little pizzeria Chatty's I don't know we took my kids there for one of my daughter's birthdays back in September I was all right I wasn't that impressed but anyways love Bay Village love driving through there you and I wanted to do this and I need to do it again, but it was a crappy, crappy day. I want to drive from Lake Avenue, where I live, just down Lake. I'm going to do that. I should do it today because it's a beautiful, sunny day. Just to show you the beautiful homes on Lake Avenue. And we'll do it if we're like driving from downtown. Like, ah, oh, let's just take the scenic route. Because I can just go, I'm three blocks from Lake Avenue. Take a right and I just take Lake all the way in to downtown Cleveland. It's so cool. I'm gonna do that one day. So, love Bay Village. 
Okay, staying on the west side, number eight is Avon. Now, Avon is not in Cuyahoga County. It's in Lorain County. But if you've seen my several Avon videos, the taxes are lower. So I sell a ton of homes in Avon, Avon Lake, and Westlake. And number one, the schools, and especially Avon, Avon Lake, because of the taxes. Avon is a very large school district, 4,500 kids. Um, Student-teacher ratio, 21-1. I'm telling you, I could name, there's probably only two or three friends that I went to high school, college with that don't live in Avon. Like everybody I know lives in one of those big developments in Avon. Um, and the price, I think I've told this story, the house I live in that I built in the Amherst School District, which I really like, um, which is 10 minutes west of Avon, the same house I built versus the same house there's all over Avon, I think there's like a $200,000 difference just to be in the Avon school district. And Amherst rates pretty well. So I don't know, teach your own. ODE gives it an A, $450,000 is your average home price. Uh, yeah, those big developments, like I said, just cause they're in Avon, my, my model right here is probably going, well, this same model in my development just sold for almost 500,000. And over there, they're probably six fifty, six ninety nine. Crazy, but that's where everybody wants to be. That's where the Costco is. That's where you know we're in Avon almost every day because that's where the shopping is. Okay, two more. Number nine, staying on the west side. Woohoo! Westlake, which is in Cuyahoga County. Westlake is right next, just east of Avon, uh, just south of Bay Village right next to North Olmstead. Uh, Westlake has 3,300 kids. They have brand new schools, uh, 17 to one student teacher ratio. ODE gives it an A, uh, $300,000, your average home price. Again, a lot of the sporting, like football players, Indians players, I don't know about the Cavs, but they a lot of them live in Westlake. They have these huge mansions, I was selling a house to a couple from Texas a couple, two summers ago, and we looked at this one house. I can't remember what football player lived there, and we're just like, oh my Lord, it was crazy. In fact, my good friend Barb, her, her son is renting a house from one of the Browns players, and there's like a movie theater, because he got traded or whatever, so he didn't want to sell it yet. So they lived together at Crocker Park, which is another reason why what to love about Westlake is Crocker Park. I'll be heading there with my teammates here in a couple hours because that's where the outdoor shopping is. It's very similar to Legacy Village. We don't have a Whole Foods there. We have a Trader Joe's. But guess what? Rocky River does have a, a Whole Foods, which whatever, I love my Trader Joe's. Uh, Westlake schools, excellent. Um, so also you can get, there's several neighborhoods. You can find a house for 250 I don't even know if you can find a house for under 200 anymore. It's crazy. You would think with these higher interest rates that the housing market would, the housing prices would go down. They're not. They're still up. We're still in multiple offers. It's insane. So Westlake, number nine, great schools. My kids went to North Olmstead. Westlake was their number one rival. My kids would get so, because we're like, we could walk to Westlake where we lived. And my kids were like, why can't we go to Westlake schools? They have this brand new high school and it was beautiful and they'd play sports there. And well now North Olmsted has a brand new high school, but my kids are all graduated, so whatever. Uh, so, okay, number 10. This went quick. I thought this would take forever. Mayfield City Schools, which kind of perplexed me because I know where Mayfield is, but then when I saw what cities it serves, I'm like, oh, well that makes sense. Very large district, 4,400 kids, 18 to one ratio. Now, ODE gives it only a B and C for achievement. So to me, achievement's the number one indicator. Although, and, it, and if you're an educator watching this and I'm wrong, but I remember it was like, okay, we were so low last year, it was easy to jump up in achievement to this year. Cause we were so low, we were up high. But when you get up that high, it's harder to get any higher. 
and they judge you on the percentages. It just seems so unfair. And then our teacher evaluations were tied to it. I hated it. And I don't know if it's changed. I've been out of education for about six years now, but it was awful. So guess what? The medium home price is under $200,000, but only in Mayfield Heights because it also services Gates Mills. Gates Mills is right between Chagrin Falls and Hunting Valley. Money. So Gates Mills, the average price home is $700,000. So, and I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to do another video on the private schools in Ohio. Because that's private schools are a big deal in Ohio. And Cleveland Magazine every year comes up with a list of like the top 20 private schools. So I think it's important to do a video on that because I'm going to guarantee you that a lot of kids from Gates Mills are going to Hawkin, they're going to university school, they're going to uh, St. Ignatius. So that also kind of hurts the demographics for these school districts because those wealthier kids don't attend them. So there you have it. Like I said, this none of this is my opinion. I'm stating what I found on the internet. You know, schools are important. You need to do your homework. I know these areas very, very well. If you watched my videos, you know I've lived in Cleveland my entire life. I have family on the east side. I've lived on the west side my entire life. I have family down south. I know the area. Give me a call. I answer my phone. I answer my text. I answer my emails. I'm here to help. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.